Solar manufacturers are constantly testing new technologies to make their solar panels more efficient. As a result, solar manufacturing has branched into a wide range of cell technologies. It can be confusing to try to figure out why you should pick one option over the other. Ever wondered about the difference between monocrystalline VS, polycrystalline solar panels, or N-type VS, P-type cells? You're in the right place. This video will give a high-level overview of the major solar cell technologies in play and explain the pros and cons of each. The first set of terms describes how solar cells are formed out of raw materials. Traditional solar cells are made from silicon, a conductive material. The manufacturer shapes raw silicon wafers into uniformly sized silicon cells. Solar cells can either be monocrystalline, cut from a single silicon source or polycrystalline, from multiple sources. Let's look at the differences between the two options. Monocrystalline solar panels contain cells that are cut from a single crystalline silicon ingot. The composition of these cells is pure because each cell is made from a single piece of silicon. As a result, monopanels are slightly more efficient than polypanels. They also perform better in high heat and lower light environments, which means they will produce closer to the rated output in less than ideal conditions. However, they cost more to produce and that higher cost is passed on to the buyer. Monopanels are a bit more expensive than polypanels of the same wattage. Lastly, monopanels have a uniform black look because the cells are made from a single piece of silicon. I personally think these look better than polypanels, but obviously, that is just a matter of preference. Polycrystalline solar cells are blended together from multiple pieces of silicon. Smaller bits of silicon are molded and treated to create the solar cell. This process is less wasteful because hardly any raw material is thrown out during manufacturing. The blended makeup of the cells gives poly panels their iconic blue color. If you look at them up close, you'll see the texture and color is uneven due to the way the cells are made. Poly solar panels are slightly less efficient than mono panels due to imperfections in the surface of the solar cells. Of course, they are cheaper to manufacture which means they cost less for the end user. The majority of solar panels deployed today are made from either monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar cells. There is a third type of solar technology, called thin film panels, which are usually deployed for large-scale utility projects in some specialty applications. Thin film panels are created by depositing a thin layer of conductive material onto a backing plate made of glass or plastic. Thin film panels typically don't see use in residential installs because they are much less efficient than mono or poly panels, with roof space at a premium. Residential customers go with more traditional crystalline silicon panels to maximize production from the space available to them. The previous section covers the process by which raw material is formed into silicon wafers. This section has to do with the process by which those wafers are treated to turn them into a functioning solar cell that can generate an electrical current. P-type cells are usually built with a silicon wafer doped with boron. Since boron has one less electron than silicon, it produces a positively charged cell. P-type cells are affected by light-induced degradation, which causes an initial drop in output due to light exposure. This has historically been the most common treatment method for solar cells. N-type cells are doped with phosphorus, which has one more electron than silicon, making the cell negatively charged. N-type cells are immune to boron oxygen defects, and as a result, they are not affected by light-induced degradation. Lit. As you might expect, these are positioned as a premium option because they degrade less over the life of the panel. Most of the panels we sell use P-type cells, which can degrade a little faster, but still perform well for 30 plus years. When you consider the lower cost of P-type cells, it typically pays to go with a cheaper module that degrades a little more as opposed to a substantially more expensive panel with slightly less degradation. But that assessment may change as N-type technology advances and costs drop over time. p erg cells p erg stands for Passivated Emitter and Rear Cell Technology. p erg cells are distinguished by an extra layer of material on the backside of the solar panel, called the passivation layer. Think of the passivation layer like a mirror. It reflects light that passes through the panel giving it a second chance to be absorbed by the solar cell. More solar radiation is absorbed by the cell, which results in a higher efficiency panel. The Eric cell technology is gaining traction because the inclusion of the passivation layer doesn't add huge manufacturing delays or expenses. The efficiency boost more than justifies the extra step in the manufacturing process. Half-cut cells Half-cut cells are exactly what they sound like. Solar cells cut in half. The smaller size of half-cut cells gives them some inherent advantages, mainly, you guessed it improved efficiency over traditional cells. Solar cells transport electrical current through ribbons that connect neighboring cells in a panel. Some of this current is lost due to resistance during transport. Because half-cut cells are half the size of a traditional cell, they generate half the electrical current. Lower current between cells means less resistance, which ultimately makes the cell more efficient. In addition, 
Half-cut cells can be more shade tolerant. When shade falls on a solar cell, it not only reduces the production from that cell, but every other cell connected to it in series as well. A traditional solar panel may have 60 solar cells wired in series. If shade falls on one series of cells, you can lose one third of that panel's production. Bifacial solar panels are panels that are treated with conductive material on both sides. They are designed to take advantage of reflected sunlight that hits the backside of the panel. In theory, this sounds like a great idea because you are doubling the conductive surface area of the panel. But in practice, bifacial panels call for a much more expensive mounting setup to get any real benefits from the technology. Bifacial panels are significantly more expensive to install, and at this point, the minor efficiency gains don't do enough to recoup the extra installation costs. Bifacial panels aren't quite ready for the limelight, though that may change as the technology develops further. We are almost wrapping up. These are the common differences between these two. Hope you liked this video. Please comment, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos.